Hey, good morning. This is Nicole Whitlock with Ecom Sellers. And my passion is helping people on their e-commerce journey, helping them to get focused, get organized, get consistent in their business. And if that's you, I'm here for you. You can schedule a free 20-minute coaching session by going to Ecom Sellers. But before we get into that, this is the daily Ecom planning session where we talk about, we have a specific topic that we cover every single day. Um, today's topic is the Amazon bestseller rank. So or Amazon bestsellers or what's the sales rank on products and how fast can you tell if they're moving on Amazon? So with that, we are live on Clubhouse. We're also live in the e-commerce planning Facebook group. So I invite you to share this out with a friend. Let somebody else know about the daily e-com planning session. And with that, before we get into the topic for today, I do want to let you know, since we're live in the e-commerce planning Facebook group, I invite you to go to the files section of that group and download the daily, weekly, and monthly planning checklist so you can follow along after this segment uh, and we can talk about the daily econ planning checklist activities that you need to be engaged in today or that we suggest that you be engaged in. So go to the file section, download those documents, and now let's get into the Amazon bestseller rank. So what is the Amazon bestseller rank? So I just went and grabbed this directly from Amazon's website. Did not realize that my cursor was on the top of this, but anyway. So basically the bestseller calculate, calculation is based off of sales and it is updated hourly to reflect the recent and historical sales of every item sold on Amazon. So basically if the item is selling, it is definitely going to have some level of sales rank. The sales rank number could be small or the sales rank number could be big. If the sales rank number is big, then depending on the category, that could or could not be a good thing. But depending on the category, that could also mean that this, the momentum for this particular item, the sales that are happening every hour and historically, and the number of sellers that happen to be on it um, have slowed down. If the sales number is super low, that means that that item is still selling very rapidly overall. You can have a completely different sales rank for a product in the primary category and also in its secondary category. Not all products have a secondary category, but several products do, secondary or subcategory. So again, the lower that particular sales number is for that product, the faster that item is selling based on many different factors, uh, based on the sales per hour, of course, also potentially based on the number of uh, products that are in that particular category against the other products that are in that category and or subcategory. And so that gives you a pretty good indication of what are the potentially the hot sellers. What are the things that are moving the fastest, selling the fastest based on um, each hour's sales? I will tell you in Q4, the sales rank for a specific product, if you look at that product in Q1, its sales rank is going to be different than it is in Q2. They're going to be different than it is in Q3. And then by the time you get to Q4, that number may be going down, going faster and faster. Typically, when we think through stuff, logically, we think, oh, okay, if the number is low, that means it's not really selling. But if the number is high, it means it really is. And that's not true. It's just the exact opposite. If the number is high, that means the sales per hour for that particular product is slowed down. And again, it's subject to the other products that are in the same category. It's also subject to... Um, you know, that particular category. It's also subject to um, a couple of other things as well. So just know that when a number on a specific product, the sales rank for a specific product is low, that's a pretty good indication that it's moving. And if you monitor a product, and there's so many different tools you can use, but Keepa is one of them. If you monitor the sales of a product um, and you look at what the sales rank was for the product, how many, how many hour, how many times per hour the product sold? Um, maybe back in January. Then you look at it again in March, and you look at it again in May and July and September. Like you're going to see a lot of movement with that particular product and the sales rank. So things that are seasonal, things that sell like crazy in Q4, 
um, those sales ranks are going to start dropping. So you can't gauge what a product is doing, going to do in this quarter uh, based off of maybe what it looked like at the beginning of the quarter. So in October, the sales rank on the product could have been 50,000. By the time you get to Black Friday, the, the sales rank on that same product could be potentially 5,000. So again, that's that product could be selling like crazy. So I always like to go to um, Amazon bestsellers. You can just do a Google search for Amazon bestsellers. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull up all the categories that are available. And you'll see those categories over in the left-hand side. And if you click on any of those categories, you'll see the secondary category and what that particular product is doing. Or, you know, you can look at the sales rank for the product. You'll see when you do, and when you do a search using Amazon bestsellers, you'll see like this orange, I don't know, orange and white number that indicates what is the best seller in these particular categories. So right now, kitchen and dining, because I just took this picture this morning, a kitchen and dining right now, the number one product is this meat thermometer. That's the thing that's selling right now. It's getting the most traction, getting the most eyeballs, getting the most sales. It's already got 63,000 sales. I mean, the reviews, not sales. 63,000 reviews. And so you can see that uh, kitchen and dining is getting the most traction right now when it comes to sales. Now, when I go over to the left-hand side, I don't see a category for kitchen and dining. I know the kitchen and dining is actually sitting in home and kitchen and kitchen and dining is a secondary category, but this meat thermometer is getting all the traction and well, it's actually right below three down. So kitchen and dining is the sum, but it's getting all of the traction right now, <laughs> this meat thermometer. And I want you to ask yourself, why do you think that this meat thermometer is number one out of all the categories? Probably because people are getting ready for Thanksgiving. That's the reason why it's number one. And so there's a logical reason in most cases when you see the movement on the bestsellers page as to why something is moving to the top of the list and something else may no longer be at the top of the list. You can also do a Google search on Amazon movers and shakers so you can see, you know, which products are moving up and getting more and more sales and which products are sort of getting uh, fewer sales are getting bumped out of the top rank um, setting. So Amazon Movers and Shakers is another one that you can look at. So if you were to drill into any of these Amazon products and you click on any of them from the Amazon bestsellers page. So we're looking at this meat thermometer. We can see, as I said before, it's got 63,000 reviews. You might as well say 64 because it's 63,886. Um, you can see that they've got a couple of different options, but the black and white one seems to be selling. Um, I also want you to note, uh, look at the price of this particular product. So it is $9.58. List price was $24.99. So that means that when this was originally, this listing was originally created, the price that they had was $24.99. They marked it down to $9.58, which is a huge drop. And so people have been snapping that up. Could be, you know, the remnants of our continued sales from Amazon's October Prime Day. But again, it's telling you that this thing is moving and it's selling like crazy. So as a seller, as you get into that space where you start the process of figuring out what you're going to source to sell on Amazon, pay attention to what's happening to products in the movers and shakers and or Amazon bestsellers, if you're looking for products that you want to move or to always have really good sales velocity that are selling like crazy. So, or continually getting steady sales. They may not be selling like crazy. They could just be getting steady sales. Products that are like replenishables always have steady sales. That means you're going to sell some of that product every single day, which means you'll get paid every two weeks like clockwork from Amazon. And that payment could be fairly consistent if you stay on top of those products that are selling pretty regularly. They can be your baseline income when it comes to being an Amazon seller if you sell a lot of replenishables and consumables because when something runs out, Somebody has to go buy some more of whatever that is. Whereas this meat thermometer, there's no running out. It's just when it breaks, you got to buy another one, maybe, or maybe not. 
maybe it doesn't break that often because it has some really good reviews. So I'm guessing once you buy it, they're going to have it for a while. So that's the other thing that you want to pay attention to. Is this product one of those things that's going to, you know, when it runs out, people have to buy more of, or is it one of those things that people just buy it and they have it for a very, 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 very long time? <laughs> uh, the last thing I want you to think about is, as we're looking at these Amazon bestsellers or this particular product is, is there any level, any type of accessory that you could sell or a product that's a complimentary product to this particular item? So when you pull these products up and you look at them, scroll down and look at the section where it says frequently sold together. That might give you an indication of some other products that you could potentially sell. Because if this is a hot product and people are looking to buy this particular product, there might be some other products that people also buy when they buy this product. You could sell um, either like if there's additional attachments, which wouldn't apply in this case, but if there were additional attachments or other accessories, maybe like uh, since this is a meat thermometer, maybe a turkey bag, maybe they buy the turkey baster. So you can go and take a look at a turkey oven bag, sorry. So you can go and look and see, again, what are the other products that are frequently sold? We know that a turkey oven bag would be considered a replenishable because as soon as it they run out of bags, they got to go buy some more. Now, how often are people cooking turkeys? Not that often, but that turkey baking bag could be used for many different things, not just turkey. You can put ham, you can put chicken. So again, as soon as that bag runs out, I got to buy more of it. So then that may give you an indication of, hey, this is a replenishable. And when people run out of it, how often they run out of it is a different story. But when they run out of it, they got to buy some more of it. So that's the difference between the two. Now, when you scroll down into uh, this particular listing. So from the main page for the particular listing, if you're inside of Amazon, you're pulling up Amazon bestsellers, you click on the very first one, you look at the product, you scroll down to the product information section. That product information section is going to give you the Amazon bestsellers rank. That's where that seller's rank is. So right now on my screen, it says that it is num the number one product in uh, kitchen and dining. So number one in kitchen and dining, that's the primary category. It is also the number one product in candy thermometers and timers, number one product in instant read thermometers and timers, and the number one product in meat and poultry tools. So that is why it is number one in the main category and number one and three subcategories or secondary categories. So that's why it's number one overall on Amazon right now. It's number one everywhere. <coughs> more than likely, whoever's listing this is, they probably did do some ad spend to be able to get to that place to get more eyeballs, or maybe they offered a really good deal during the um, Amazon Prime Day sale. And so they're just keeping that. The other thing I wanted to point out is when we talked about the seller app, I just brought up another image. And so next to that is what the sales rank will look like in the seller app. If you didn't catch the Seller Act app session one or session two, part one and part two, go back and watch those. But if you did, if you didn't and you didn't get a chance to, you can see that I've also included a screenshot from my phone of the previous images we were looking at. And we can see the sales rank when you scan a product using your Amazon Seller app, you can see the sales rank at the top of the screen for that particular product. So at the top of the screen. So go through, watch the previous sessions on the Amazon seller app. So you'll know where you find the sales rank, go through and look at some of the products by um, looking up Amazon bestsellers. Also look at Amazon movers and shakers. So you can have some indication of what potentially that you could be sourcing and selling in the future based off of movement. And remember that the sales rank for a specific product changes significantly from season to season, quarter to quarter, or there are products that are always in the Amazon bestsellers. And those may be the products you want to investigate more because those could be potentially hot selling products for you. All right. 
So if you're ready to turn up the dial in your business and get laser focused, I encourage you to grab the 2023 My Econ Planner. It's available right now. You can go to myeconplanner.com to grab that planner and use that to change the trajectory of your business in 2023. So let's all get laser focused in 2023 so that we can be extremely profitable. Whatever this current economy situation is, it's not going to last forever. And so when we come out of the other side of that, people will be spending. People are spending now. Don't be fooled. Regardless of what they say in the news, maybe you just need to walk away from the news sometimes. But <laughs> regardless of what they say in the news, people are buying right now. And as soon as they come out of the other side of whatever this is, they call it a recession, maybe, um, people are going to continue to buy and the sales are going to be crazy. So it's time for you to get focused, get organized, get consistent in your business. Grab the My Ecom Planner so you're ready for all of the sales that can be coming your way. This is the time to get better at your skill, to master your skill, so that when the floodgates of purchases or the sales start to increase higher than they are right now, that you're already in a good position. You've gained the knowledge, developed the skills that you need to be able to take advantage of those that increased traffic. Because people are not going to stop buying online. Um, if you need a free coaching session, you can go to ecomsellers.com, click on free resources and schedule a free 20 minute coaching session. If you want to talk about your business, talk about your schedule, talk about your game plan for 2023 or for right now for Q4. And we invite you to get support on your e-commerce journey. You can join Ecom Sellers Academy at ecomsellersacademy.com. It's terribly affordable, $17.99 a month. So you can join Ecom Sellers Academy right now. And again, you're going to get so many different perks, including um, weekly lists, two different lists every single week. And we also have a live weekly training and live weekly Q&A. So with that, let's go ahead and review the checklist. If you didn't download it before, this is your opportunity to stop right now. Go to the e-commerce planning Facebook group, click on the files section and download the daily e com planning checklist. Afterwards, we're going to continue to be live on Clubhouse. So if you have any questions, you want to talk about your business, if you want to do an accountability check-in, like you need somebody that you need to talk to about your business, regardless of what happens to be happening and regardless of what e-commerce method, because we talk about Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Shopify, Walmart, you name it. We talk about it. Facebook Marketplace, Macari, Poshmark, so Bonanza, whatever platform you are selling on. I don't talk about whatnot yet. I need to learn whatnot. So that's one of the platforms that I don't know. And comment sold. Those are the two I don't know yet. Uh, but we are going to go dabble in those at some point. So if you want to talk about your e-commerce business in general, definitely join us. And when we go through this checklist, it is 100% generic. So it doesn't matter what your method of e-commerce is, whether it is private label, white label, print on demand, retail arbitrage, online arbitrage, wholesale, thrifting, um, liquidation, books. It doesn't matter. We talk about all aspects of e-commerce and you're going to build a schedule based off of how you're running your business and your current lifestyle to accommodate you. All right. So let's get into the daily checklist. So the objective and the goal of the daily um, checklist is to be intentional and to be consistent. That's the objective is to be intentional and to be consistent. You should be intentional about the actions that you take in your business and the things that you do. You should be intentional about the inventory that you source, the products that you research. You should be intentional about everything that you do that's going to help make you money in the business. And the things that you should focus on every day, you should have multiple income producing activities on your agenda for the day. That's a big one. That should be one of your priorities to have multiple income producing activities on your agenda. So with that, the, we recommend that you engage in three different things. One, that you invest five to 15 minutes the night before. Two, that you invest five to 15 minutes the morning of, that would be right now. And three, that you invest just a little bit of time in thinking about the future or things that are coming up, things that might be disruptions. So number one, we're going to go through um, the night before. That 15-minute investment every single day consistently over time could yield you huge benefits and huge rewards. You just have to see the value in it, the value of doing that. 
So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to review your schedule that you built for the day before you go to bed and just see what you got done, what you didn't get done, what progress did you make, what did you not get, what progress did you not make, what are the things you have to move to tomorrow, what do you have to move to next week, what do you have to move to next month. It's okay if you didn't get everything on your list done. That is okay. So the goal is to go through and do an assessment on the day. You can grade the day, rate the day, give it a, you know, <laughs> a letter grade, or you can say, okay, I got these things done. I didn't get done, these things done. And you need to determine why there are some things that you didn't get done. There might be a valid reason and it's okay. Again, we celebrate the things we did get done. We do not harp on the things we didn't get done. We just increase our awareness about that. And maybe, just maybe, we evaluate because always, you should always be in learning mode. You need to learn from your mistakes and or learn from what didn't get done. There might be a valid reason so that you can make adjustments in the future and build a better schedule in the future. Okay. A better daily schedule. Next, you're going to go through and update your daily tracking stats. If you don't have a My Ecom Planner, um, I encourage you to get one, first of all. But if you don't, uh, if you do, that's great. You have a place where you can update your daily tracking stats. We've given you so many different fields in which you can use to track those stats. And if you um, if you grab the if you you can grab the daily um, the econ planner right now, you can get the digital version, sorry, for a discounted price right now for 2022. And the 2023 digital versions are going to be available, I think, next week or the following week. So I'm excited about that. And you'll be able to use that to help you make some decisions and start filling it in. So <clears throat> in the daily tracking stats, you're tracking your sales, you're tracking your um, expenses, you're tracking your mileage, you're tracking uh, the number of listings that you created, maybe the number of listings that you reworked, you're tracking any ads, like you're tracking a lot of different things. These are things that are going to move the needle in your business and also help you maintain and sustain momentum in your business. Number three, you're going to go ahead and review your online calendar. This is your online personal calendar, online business calendar, and online job calendar. So that that way, you know what's coming up tomorrow before you go to bed. Sometimes things slip our mind, and so it's just a reminder of what's coming up. I encourage people to look and see what's coming up the entire week. But again, if your life is so busy that you don't have a chance to really kind of eyeball your entire week in advance, then go through the process of looking at it the day before at a minimum. And then the last thing is to um, write out your schedule for tomorrow. What are the things you need to get done? What are the top priorities? And don't just write out your schedule for your business, write out your schedule for your life. That's one of the things I think people have not always done a great job of balancing their life and their business together. God gives you 24 hours in the day. We're awake pretty much 18 to 16 of those hours. And so 18 to 16 of those hours are not spent in your business. So your goal is to balance the two of your life and your business together and help them to work in better harmony with each other. So including dedicated time to work in your business and or segmented time to work in your business, along with all the other things that make up you and your life and your lifestyle is extremely important. It'll also help keep you on track for other things because sometimes we stop working in our business because an emergency came up in the other part of our life because we didn't really balance the two. So again, include everything that's happening in your life from your personal to your spiritual fitness, financial business, all of that. So that that way you have an inclusive schedule for the day and not just a partial schedule for the day. Then the morning of today, you're going to get up after you've had your coffee, gone to go work out or whatever you normally do. I encourage you to review your schedule from yesterday because you kind of did a reset. You went to sleep, you woke up, so you reset for the day and review the schedule and just see if there was anything you missed that you need to add so that that way you can build a better Tuesday schedule in the future. Step two is I encourage you to review your weekly priorities and weekly habits. It's hump day. It's Wednesday. So you need to make sure that you're not missing anything in your weekly habits, things that you said you wanted to track, and also things that you said you needed to get done this week, priorities for this week. These priorities that you established probably are tied directly to your monthly goals. This is the third full week in October. So again, what were your monthly goals for October? And what were your priorities for this week to help you accomplish those goals in October? So that is something you need to definitely be paying attention to and you need to look into. Then, um, as I said, look at your monthly plan. 
and see what you had on the agenda. What were the goals and objectives for the month of October? And then step four is to review the schedule you wrote out last night. You may need to make some edits, some adjustments to it. Because again, if you haven't been reaching your goals, you may need to add one or two goal related activities to today. And so you can rewrite it if you need to. Um, after you read it or rewrite it, then you need to speak it into existence. Say it out loud so that that way you're ready to like turn the dial up on today's activities, get laser focused, kind of like step into the schedule. We're ready to start executing the schedule. This is the game plan for the day. Get your train on the tracks and your goal is to keep your train on the tracks all day long. <laughs> that doesn't always happen. My train falls off the tracks a couple of times a day, but it's okay. I get it back onto this, uh, back onto the tracks because of the fact that I have a schedule. I can go back and look at it and say, oh, right now I'm supposed to be doing this. So there are things that are going to be disruptions and your goal is to manage those. And we'll talk about that in just a second. And then last, you want to step four, five of this process is to go through the process and write out your schedule, just a tentative one, not a big one, for tomorrow. So that you at least have an outline of what you want to do tomorrow that also, since you've looked at the monthly plan, kind of gives you an idea of, oh, these were my monthly goals. I probably need to write down an objective for tomorrow tied to my monthly goals because it's still fresh in your mind. The last thing is to work on managing and mitigating or minimizing disruptions in this routine that you're working to establish. That is one of the most challenging parts of this journey is there are going to be disruptions and eruptions in the routine. And your goal is to maintain and to sustain momentum in this routine to keep going in the midst of it all. That's the objective. So if there's little minor things that are coming up, you're going to have to move your schedule around to be able to accommodate those minor things that you know that are coming up. I'm not talking about emergencies. I'm talking about a planned doctor's appointment that maybe you scheduled three months ago and now it's coming up and you're like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> oh, crap. I forgot. Um, so make adjustments to your schedule so you can maintain momentum. What I mean by maintain momentum is maybe you were on a trajectory to create 10 listings every single day, no matter what, for the last 30 days. And today is day 22, hypothetically. And because of the fact that you have a doctor's appointment, you're going to, go, oh, well, I'm going to have to sacrifice something today because I can't go to this doctor's appointment and create listings, create my 10 listings today. So you don't have to sacrifice creating the 10 listings. Maybe you dial it down a little bit and you only create one listing today. At least that way, you're still at least creating a listing every single day, no matter what. And you can get your train back on the tracks tomorrow and work towards the 10. If you know that you have a doctor's appointment coming up, maybe on Friday. And today is Wednesday. You could, instead of creating 10 listings today, maybe you create 11 or 12 listings today, 11 or 12 on Thursday. And then on Friday, create one. And then Saturday, create 11 or 12. That way, your numbers for the week are not that far off. So again, make adjustments to be able to accommodate that. And then if you have something major coming up in the next couple of weeks, maybe some outpatient surgery, maybe you're going on vacation, you got a family reunion, a wedding to go to, whatever it happens to be, then set yourself up for success. Maybe create a couple of draft listings today in order to maintain and sustain the momentum of creating listings. Create a couple of draft listings. So you're going to create your 10 and create two drafts today. Create your 10 and tomorrow and create two drafts tomorrow. And just keep doing that for the next couple next week until that time comes. Then that way, while you're on vacation or you're doing outpatient surgery, you can release those draft listings while you're on vacation and still have listings going up every single day, thereby maintaining and sustaining the momentum that you've been working to build in your business and the consistency in your business. So there's so many different strategies. Your goal is to look outside the box and figure out how can I maintain or sustain the momentum on the habits I've been working to build in my business so that I can continue to keep my sales steady or to stay on top of potential, don't lose future sales because of the fact that I'm not creating listings on a regular basis. Because we all know the platforms love consistency. They love consistent products being listed on a regular basis. So do what you can to maintain that uh, consistency. Now, I just focused on listings. There may be many other areas of your business in which you can work on 
maintaining and sustaining momentum. The only way you're going to know is to write out what's coming up and then figure out what the impact is and focus on those income producing activities so you can maintain and sustain that momentum. So I hope this information is helpful. I hope it's a blessing to you and your business. We are still live on Clubhouse. So if you want to go over there and chat with me about anything, you can jump into Clubhouse right now. You can unmute yourself and be open to open asking any questions that you have. In addition to that, I just want to say, I hope my prayer for you is that you have an extremely focused, um, highly productive and highly successful day. And with that, we are going to say goodbye for now. Bye, y'all.